You are now listening to the Unscripted Ohio Podcast, brought to you by Buckeye Grove. For all the latest Buckeyes news, analysis, reaction, and the best Ohio State community on the entire internet, head over to BuckeyeGrove.com or follow us on Twitter at Ohio State Rivals. Without any further delay, it's time to get unscripted. Broadcasting from Podcast Central, a place that is not his mother's basement. Hey, Ma, can we get some meatloaf? We promise. Here's your host, Kyle Lamb. Hey, Ma, the meatloaf. So, um, Ohio State basketball, 70 to 60 winners over Nebraska on Saturday. Now, I don't want to make a bigger deal out of this win than it is. At the end of the day, it's a good, not a great win against a Nebraska team that, like Ohio State, has really been struggling lately. But I said this on Twitter in the second half. Um, you know, when Ohio State started getting things going, remember the, the first part of that second half really looked a little, yeah, you know, Ohio State was a little bit on the ropes there. Nebraska was getting things going on the offensive side of the ball. They were getting some rhythm, some momentum. Things were looking a little iffy. You know, Nebraska you know, had been down six at half, and they came back, and they were up, I think, what, two points uh, there a few minutes into the second half. And all of a sudden, you know, some doubt is creeping in your mind. If you're like me, you're sitting there watching that. You know, I, I admit having this thought. I'm like, you know, Ohio State's going to lose this game right now. And it's not, you know, you're down two points. And, and let's be honest, college basketball, you can go from down two to up 12 in a hurry. I mean, it, it's not so much the point margin. That was a concern for Ohio State at that moment in time. But you have a Nebraska team that all of a sudden getting a little confidence. They're they're starting to make some shots. Ohio State's defense a little iffy. They're missing shots. You know, you have a few lazy passes, careless turnovers. You know, we've seen this movie before, right? You know know from this five-game losing streak, you're watching this Ohio State team play, and you're like, here we go again. You know, this is going to be another tough loss. And But you got to give Ohio State credit, though. They bounced back. I thought they... They showed a lot of poise, and what's really remarkable, despite the five-game losing streak, they they really showed a lot of confidence. You know, they never doubted themselves. They started making plays. They made them, you know, they got a little sloppy at the end, and and I think let Nebraska get a little closer than they needed to. But Ohio State made some shots, and Luther Muhammad, you know, give that kid a lot of credit. You know, that guy, he was huge for the Buckeyes on Saturday. Um but I said this on Twitter. I just said, you know, this stretch right here in, in the middle of the second half when Ohio State kind of turned around a two-point deficit to a 12-point lead on the road against a, an equally, uh, you know, uh, shall we say desperate team because Nebraska, I think, was almost as desperate as Ohio State. That took a lot of guts. It took a lot. It was a, a huge step in the right direction for Ohio State and, and for a couple reasons. I, I thought, you know, I said on Twitter, I thought it saved their season. And I, I don't feel like I was exaggerating by saying that. I really felt like that stretch right there may have saved the season. And it's not so much the difference between winning and losing being the difference in them being an NCAA team or an NIT team. That one game doesn't necessarily cause them to lose because, I mean, you look at it this way, that was a Category 1 win. And by a Category 1 win, I mean in terms of the NCAA Selection Committee, they break down all of your wins and losses into four categories. And Category 1, in terms of wins, are going to be wins against what used to be RPI, but now against net. If you are, you know, you beat a 1-35 to 35 team at home in net, that's a Category 1 win. If you beat a team 1-50 to 50 in net uh, you know, on a neutral floor, that's a Category 1 win. In this case, they beat Nebraska, who, are, who was a top 60 team or top 50 team in net. They won that. If you beat a team 1-75 to 75 on the road, that's a Category 1 win. So Ohio State now has three Category 1 wins all on the road against Cincinnati, Creighton, and Nebraska. Now, these aren't great teams, but because they're one on the road, uh, they are basically the equivalent of beating a top 50 team on a neutral floor. And that's what Ohio State has done now three times. They've won away from home. So losing on the road against Nebraska would not have been a big deal, but they needed that win not only for the resume because they got a third quality win in there, but you don't want to be going to Michigan this week week, you know, with a six-game losing streak when you're fighting for your tournament lives, and there's still a lot of games left. It's a catch-22 for Ohio State from here on out. You know, look at their schedule. They've got a lot of of tough games, and it works both ways. On one hand, 
they've got a lot of tough games, so that's a lot of potential losses here. You know, Ohio State could win, uh, you know, only half of their games remaining and still make the tournament just because they're not going to have a lot of opportunity for bad losses in that mix. If, if they win the games that they need to win, you know, Rutgers, um, Illinois, um, you know, Penn State, these, these games at home are games that they should win. And they're not easy wins. They're not great. You know, they're not terrible teams, but they should still win them. But because Ohio State is kind of in a catch-22 situation here, it's like on one hand, th- there's not an opportunity for a lot of bad losses, which is great. But you've also got to show up every night to get wins. Now, that's that's where the flip side of the, this coin comes in. There's an opportunity for a lot of great wins. You know, Ohio State still has a chance to win at Michigan. They still have a chance to win at Michigan State. They still have a chance to win against Wisconsin. They still have, have a chance to win at Maryland. Uh, even at Indiana, who, by the way, is struggling even worse than Ohio State with a six-game losing streak. Uh, they, you can go to Indiana and pick up what's still going to be a quality win because it's on the road. And it gets a, it's a team that's in the top 50, top 60 of the net rankings. So Ohio State has a chance to to get so many good wins under their belt. And that's why this win was important, because they stopped the bleeding for now. And if they go to Ann Arbor on Tuesday, if they lose this game, it's okay. You know, at least they stopped the bleeding, and nobody is going to hold it against them that they lost against the top five team on the road. Okay, that's not going to hurt them. But they needed to start winning. And they need to get some confidence back. And I think that game does that. And I think this is good timing because, look, you know, Michigan, they're a really good team. They've been tough at home. They're one of the best defensive teams in the country. They play efficient on offense. You know, they don't have the great scorers. They don't have a lot of super athletes or super, you know, talented basketball players. But they are just an all-around really good team that does everything well. And Ohio State is going to have to be efficient. They're going to have to cut down on turnovers and play a smart game without a lot of mistakes on Tuesday. And if they do that and make a few shots, you know, they don't have to make 50% of their three-pointers, but they've got to make some shots. If they do that, I think they, they could win this game, and that would really, really turn around the complexion of this season for the Buckeyes. Ohio State has a chance to get this done. They're going to need more consistent production like from what they got out of Luther Muhammad on Saturday. Now, you know, Muhammad is not going to score 24 points a game, especially not at this point in his career, okay? He's not there. That's not practical to expect. Uh, But he was phenomenal on Saturday. If they can get that kind of performance a little more often from him or from Dwayne Washington, who's been battling the flu the last couple games, or from C.J. Jackson or Keyshawn Woods, one of these guys has got to step up and be more consistent scoring. And it, and it doesn't have to necessarily be the same guy every time. If they can get that production from two out of those four guys every game, this is an NCAA tournament team. Caleb Wesson has got to stay on the floor. He has got to learn to stay out of foul trouble. But at the same time, we've seen some signs the last two games. In Ohio State, maybe when Caleb is off of the floor, they're learning a little bit better how to play without him and play th- without playing through him. I think he's struggling right now. He's frustrated with all the double teams that he's getting. He's not kicking the ball out on doubles as as quick as he needs to. And I think Ohio State, with him being off the floor the last two games, has showed some signs and confidence of being able to play without him on the floor. And part of that is making shots, but part of that is confidence, and part of that is confidence to take the right shot. I think sometimes they're overpassing, and it might be a confidence issue. But Ohio State has the ability to get through the season as an NCAA tournament team. Remember, it is a tough Big Ten, so some of the problems we're seeing is not just their own issues, their own inexperience, their own lack of talent, and their lack of identity, but it's also they're playing a tough conference schedule. But they can overcome all that. Help is on the way. DJ Carton, EJ Lydell, Alonzo Gaffney, all playing tremendous seasons. Carton especially, I posted his his stats on Twitter. Uh, You'll want to check those out. Averaging 24 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists a game. He has been really lethal for Bettendorf High School this year. Uh, But help is on the way for next year, but don't write this year off yet. They've got things going, I think, uh, potentially in the right direction now. What we saw on Saturday was a step forward. Nebraska, being in a similar situation, Ohio State went on the road against a team that really needed a win. And they were able to out-hustle them. They, were out, they out-hustled Nebraska on Saturday. They made more plays than Nebraska did. They made more shots than Nebraska did. 
that's a really, I think, a really good commentary on where Chris Holtman and his staff has this team despite a five-game losing streak. So the Buckeyes, the Wolverines, remember, don't call them yellow. Call them maize. That's what they want you to call them. Uh, battling 9 p.m. in Ann Arbor Tuesday night. Huge, huge game for Ohio State. A loss is not devastating, especially with this win on Saturday. But a win gets them not only a fourth quad one victory, but, man, I think it really changes the complexion because Ohio State has a chance to go home these next couple weeks and pick up some wins. So if they can win on the road against Michigan, or even if they can't, things look a little different now than they did Friday night. And that's all you can ask from Ohio State. Good Monday, ladies and gents. This is the Unscripted Ohio Podcast. I am your host, Kyle Lamb, and we are brought to you by BuckeyeGrove.com. It was a great Friday. I tell you what, here on the show today, uh, we have a big recruiting update coming up momentarily from Buckeye Grove recruiting analyst Mark Gibbler. He is going to discuss a big man on campus this past weekend from the big island of Hawaii. And uh, maybe we have some big news to discuss. We will see. Uh, but uh, also, there is a big game coming up on Tuesday night in Ann Arbor. Ohio State involved in a notorious B1G matchup with that team up north, Michigan. But please, please do not call them the yellow and blue. They really, 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 really do not want them uh, want you calling them yellow. They are maize. Just remember that. Uh, extend them the same courtesy that they would extend uh, Ohio State fans in not calling Ohio State Ohio. Uh, please give them that same respect and satisfaction of not calling them yellow. That is a public service announcement courtesy of the Michigan official athletic department Twitter account uh, over the weekend. So I, I don't know if you caught that. But they don't want you calling them yellow. Anyway, so like I said, uh, several things that I want to go over today. Um, I'll talk about the Ohio State basketball stuff here uh, in a few minutes, and then we'll get to Mark here a little bit later in the show. Um, Ohio State, you know, if you did not see over the weekend, Saturday they had a, a, a really important 70-60 win at Nebraska. That kind of kind of got things uh, halted as far as the negative momentum was concerned. Uh, geez, I mean, they were... They had lost five in a row, and they would have been staring down six in a row going into Michigan with the possibility of losing a seventh in a row. So that was an important win. I'll talk about that here in a few minutes with that big game looming Tuesday night, 9 p.m. against Michigan. Um, you know, there is one thing, and look, I'm so grateful for everybody that listens to the podcast here. We talk mostly Ohio State, and occasionally we'll talk some other Ohio uh, sports. Um you know, as I said in the very beginning of the show, this is an Ohio State podcast, but it's, it's supposed to be more than that. It's supposed to be an Ohio sports thing. And so I, every once in a while, I'll freelance and talk about the Blue Jackets or the Cavs or, you know, the Browns or Bengals or Reds or Indians, although I haven't really gotten into them very much here. But we do have ambitions to expand, and I'll, I'll get to more details when the time comes. But we have some things planned that I'm really, really excited about here for the podcast. But if there's one thing that really excites me, you know, talking about uh, as much as talking about Ohio State or in general college sports, because college basketball and college football has always been very exciting for me to talk about. And, you know, you probably notice I'm, I'm very passionate, very ambitious, and I love the fact that we get to do this together. Um, I'm so grateful for the opportunity that I've had with this podcast, and I'm, I'm so grateful for everybody that listens routinely and religiously and, and comments on my Twitter account, you know, it, you can tweet at me at KYLAM8 if you don't already. Um, I really do love the discussion. It's fun for me. There's one other thing, though, that I love. And you may have noticed, and I love talking about television. If, if I could be uh, a Cisco and Ebert or a Cisco or an Ebert, you know, that would be fun, being a TV or a movie critic. Uh, because there are some shows that, you know, I don't get into every show, but, but the shows that I do get into, the ones that are really, really good, I love talking about, and by the way, I think I could be better than Cisco and Ebert. I think I can do better than two thumbs up because, I mean, I have, I'm counting right now, and I'm not a math whiz here, but I'm counting, and I do have like 10 fingers, so I could do, you know, more than two. I could do three or four, or, you know, I could be known for just giving the two birds up. You know, that could be my thing, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, some might take that, a, a, take offense to that, but, you know, I, I would say that's a good thing. If I give you two birds up, I'm smiling. Hey, that's a really good rating for me. Um, 
you know, there are two shows, though, and, and I mentioned one of them a couple weeks ago. There are two shows that I would recommend to almost anyone, and one of them I did, and I say almost anyone with Game of Thrones, and I mentioned this last week, uh, two weeks ago, with the premiere coming up on April 14th, and I would say the only reason I, I recommend it to almost anyone is because Game of Thrones is kind of an acquired taste. You know, if you're like me, you're not crazy about the fantasy genre, and I mentioned this, you, you know, maybe it's not for you, and, and, and there's a lot of blood and gore and, and violence, and that's not for everybody. But I will say this, even I, I'm not really into that kind of stuff normally, but I would recommend it to most people just because it is it supersedes all of that. You know, there's all that stuff in there, but it's still just an amazing show. Now, it was a, a difficult show to watch because you've got all that stuff in the beginning of the first season. And if you're like me, you did not read the books. You don't know most of the characters' names. And when I started watching, I didn't have the benefit of, you know, I had a smaller television. The, the quality of the stream was okay, but I was watching it on, on HBO, um, HBO Now, which I've now got HBO Go because I've got an actual HBO subscription. So I watch it on HBO Go. And I've got a 65-inch television, 4K 4K stream, so I watch it on HBO Go, and it gets a lot better quality. But when I started watching originally, I had a smaller TV, and, and my, my speakers bled a lot, so I didn't hear a lot of the dialogue very well. So not knowing the characters' names and not knowing some, not hearing all the dialogue, I sure missed a lot of details the first time around. Now, watching it this time with a better TV and having, not to brag, but I, I've got a really good speaker system. I spent a lot of money on the speakers. They better be good. And they have been, but I'm able to hear the dialogue really crisp and really clear. And the British accents, on top of bad audio, <laughs> you know, you really can't. Some of the dialogue really hard to hear, and and more important than hearing is understanding. You can hear it, but that doesn't mean you're going to understand. But now, now that I have that benefit, I'm able to this time around. I'm able to hear the dialogue. I'm able to understand what's going on. And second time through, it's much much better. Um, but I would I still wouldn't recommend the Game of Thrones. For everybody, just because there are some people, no matter how good the show is, you're not going to be able to get past some of the, the violence and, and uh, sexual content and, and some of the stuff that occurs in the show. But the other show that I would recommend to anyone is Breaking Bad. And, and that's because I think Breaking Bad, you can be a fan of almost any type of show and get into it. It's, it's the only show I, I think I've ever seen uh, that... I felt got better every single season. There are five seasons. The, the last season was split into two. And if you haven't watched it, you know, I'm not going to do any spoilers here, but I will say this. It just, it, it, it get through the first season. And if you're still not convinced that you like it, you, you know, maybe you never will, but it really, really picks up into the second season and, and it gets better and better and better. And so there was big news over the weekend because, you know, it's been announced that there is going to be a Breaking Bad movie come, coming. And, of course, there was, you know, already the Better Call Saul spinoff, which is now it's its fourth season going into its fifth season. And, of course, if you're not familiar with the show yet, Better Call Saul is a prequel to Breaking Bad using some of the same characters that are involved in the Breaking Bad universe. And there, there has long been reported that there is going to be a Breaking Bad movie coming out which is going to take place during and after the Breaking Bad series. And all I will say is this. I, there was a part of me, and there still remains a part of me, that a little eh, shaky about the fact that they are making a movie just because the ending to the Breaking Bad series was so satisfying. I almost don't want there to be anything after this. But I, I got to say, I have so much faith in Vince Gillen, the, Bill Gilligan, the creator, and the writers of Breaking Bad, I think that they are going to do this really well. And um, so I'm going to give my stamp of approval. I urge you, catch up with Breaking Bad, start on Better Call Saul, get caught up on Better Call Saul, and watch the Breaking Bad movie. It will contain, it will have Jesse Paul, and now it, it has confirmed that it's going to have Brian Cranston as well. And he plays Walter White, a.k.a. Heisenberg, uh, on the Breaking Bad show. So that is my stamp of approval. I urged you a couple weeks ago to get caught up on Game of Thrones if you have not already. This seems like a good time, given the, the news, to also get caught up on Breaking Bad. End of, um, yeah, you know, end, end of venting. That's my little entertainment moment. That's my, my two uh, middle fingers up, my two birds up. I am giving the stamp of approval on Breaking Bad. Uh, Kyle, the TV critic. <laughs> that's, my, uh, that's my unscripted Ohio entertainment moment. Uh, I hope you appreciated that. But let's get into some basketball talk 
Uh, and then, of course, we got Mark Gibbler coming up here shortly. It's time to go inside Ohio State recruiting and take a peek behind the scenes with Buckeye Grove recruiting guru, Mark Gibbler, and his magical orb of wonderment. They said it couldn't be done, but he's outdone himself once more. Back for another recruiting roundup. That's what I do. I drink and I know things. All right, Mark, good be, uh, good to be with you again. Uh, we, we don't have a ton of guys to talk about, but there are you know, a couple interesting uh, scenarios here playing out. Um, let's, let's get right into it. Uh, over the weekend, we had, uh, uh, we had a big visitor on campus, uh, both figuratively and literally speaking. Uh, so clue us in on who that was and uh, how that visit has gone. You know, as we record this Sunday evening, obviously you're still trying to get some of the details, but uh, you know, how did that visit go for Ohio State? Yeah, um, Enoch Vimahai was on campus, a uh, four-star offensive lineman out of Hawaii. Um, I, I, it's amazing that they're still in this. If you think about it, they've been recruiting him for three weeks. Uh, he lives halfway across the world, it feels like. Um, no prior visit, nothing, just this official, but... Uh, I think, uh, from what I've heard, things went well enough that they're going to keep pushing here. Um, obviously, no commitment or anything like that. Uh, he's looking at announcing on February 6th, which is uh, you know late signing day or w- whatever we're calling it these days. Um, you know, it would have been the traditional signing day. Um, so nothing here uh, in the immediate future, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, I'm not expecting anything uh, in the next you know, day or two, but, um, my, 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 you know, information or whatever is, is that things have, have went well enough over the weekend that, uh, Ohio State, you know, feels, you know, there's a chance and, um, they're going to continue to, to push and pursue this. Um, and we'll see what happens. I, I, you know, Ryan, I expect Ryan Day to go out there. Uh, you know, that's that's quite a haul. But uh, I, I, at this point, I'm expecting Ryan Day to to go out there and um, do some type of in-home visit and and try and lock this thing up. Uh, you know, I I think uh, before we you know move on to any anyone else you want to talk about, I think the one thing here, just reading the board a lot and just kind of the the you know Twitter and everything else, um, this is not just Ohio State versus USC. Um, Oklahoma's in there. Uh, I, I keep reading, you know, USC's and you know, USC's a nightmare right now. No, you know, like, well, while some of that may be true, you know, Oklahoma had a pretty good visit with him last week. Um, and, um, you know, the, the people around that program think that Oklahoma, you know, is, is in the picture here as well. So it, it's a three team race. And, um, you know, I, for a kid, they've been recruiting for three weeks. I mean, what, what, what more can you ask for at this point? You know, Mark. One of the reasons I love having you on is because you managed to ask, you managed to answer like three of my questions at once sometimes, and I love that because you you make my job so much easier. Because that that was honestly going to be my next question: Is this an Ohio State USC battle, or is there anybody else here in, squarely in the mix? And you just basically just uh, gave me a good answer on that. It's not just Ohio State USC because I'm one of those people too. I'm like, well, I'm not saying that USC is out of this, but my goodness, I mean, they're just bleeding right now. They're bleeding. Uh, recruits, they're bleeding transfers. I mean, their coaches are leaving. Their, their, you know, their pets' heads are falling off. Um, it's not going well for USC at the moment. Yeah, and I, and I think that's that's really helped open the door here because um, he was pretty much he's been pegged for USC for a while, and uh, he made the Oklahoma visit, and then did the uh, the Polynesian Bowl, and um, you know he was going to announce the Polynesian Bowl, and he was. You know, probably announced for USC at the Polynesian Bowl, and then all of a sudden, um, just the way things have have sort of deteriorated there a little bit, and then Ohio State starts pushing, and Oklahoma has really been pushing. Um, I just think he uh, obviously decided to take the Ohio State visit, which which was the reason for the delay, um, or else it would have been a USC versus Oklahoma decision. So I mean, there's some good there's some good signs here. I'm not you know I'm not ready to go out here and start uh, beating the drum that it's happening, but um, Again, I don't know what more you could ask for for a guy they've been recruiting for three weeks. I, this is, I mean, this has uh, moved very quickly, and um, it's it's still uh, 
you know, the, 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 the dusting of snow didn't scare them off. Apparently I, I expect Ohio. I think they're going to keep pushing here. I think this is going to be a thing here the next week and a half. Well, you, you can't see it, but I'm playing my tiny violin for Ryan day right now who may have to take a business trip out to Hawaii. Yeah. R- real tough. Uh, you know, he's got, uh, there's not a lot of 2019 guys left. He's been doing a lot of traveling for, for, uh, for 2020 right now, honestly, uh, the last few weeks. So, um, yeah, he gets to just, uh, you know, it's not like they have eight guys they're in on right now for 19. There's a very small handful of guys left. And, you know, so he, he can't, he can, he can only go see, um, you know, he can only go do one in home per, per, uh, prospect, um, can only go, you know, as far as high schools, he can only go to a high school, um, you know, once. So, I mean, there's only so much he can do. So I guess he's just going to have to go to Hawaii. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> must be nice. Uh, so this is um, with the numbers being what they are. I, I assume that even despite that, they are, you know, this would be a, a bonus if they could land him and Nestor, right? This is not an either or scenario. I think that they would take both. Is that, is that accurate? They would take the whole lot. Yeah, they would take both of those guys and Dewan Jones from uh, from Indianapolis. Uh, they would they would take the whole group, I think, if they could. Um, so you know, the, the things change obviously when you get down the stretch and maybe you add something that you weren't expecting. But you know, that really hasn't happened at all with with the Urban Meyer transition. And then you you, you know you did lose a couple guys. So um, you know, but initial, but you know, back to what I was getting at there was that. Initially, this was going to be a five-man offensive line class, and they had kind of woefully missed their number here. Um, and so, getting Jones and um, Vimahai would would, uh, would get you, and keeping Nestor obviously would get you there. Uh, I, you know, I'm I'm a results guy, so at the end of the day, I guess it doesn't really matter how they got there. So, I mean, that would be something if that, if somehow, some way. Now, I'm not predicting all three yet i i tend to think one of these three is going to fall through but at least at least but we'll see i mean they're they're all they're all in play and i i haven't been told that they wouldn't take all of them i, th- I think it's uh i think they're going for it before i ask you about uh nestor and jones specifically i, I do want before i forget I, I is are they targeting anybody else i mean are they looking basically you know three guys three offensive linemen is there anybody else they would take because th- there's not a lot of other names popping up yeah. at other positions yeah i mean that's pretty much it right now yeah i mean unless something <laughs> unless something's going on behind the scenes that, that you know that the public you know that no one's aware of right now that's it i mean they've They've called off the they called off the defensive back search about a week or two ago. Um, they decided uh, not going to go that direction, um, and uh, you know maybe part of that was this this Vimahai situation where they looked at things and said that there's a chance you know that to add two to three more offensive linemen and they're going to just focus on that. And with the 2020 class being so good nationally and really being good at uh, defensive back. It's an unbelievable defensive backs class nationally. Um, the talent and the depth at, at, in that position group in 2020 is amazing. Um, so th- yeah, there's not, you know, I think people keep asking me, you know, George Pickens. I'm like, eh, I don't think so. <laughs> that, that was, that was always a pipe dream and that's, that's staying a pipe dream right now. Unless uh, <laughs> George has some wild, change of heart here in the next week or so. But yeah, I that's, think that's, that's a thing right now. I was going to say, that's probably a case where, you know, if they really felt like they had a chance, of course they would entertain it. But, you know, that just seems like one of those cases where it's like, you're hearing this kid say this and the coaches are rolling their eyes like, yeah, whatever. We'll believe that when we see it. Right. Right. I mean, you know, they made the, they made the phone call or whatever, but you know, kid hasn't visited. It just, it just, there's no reason to think that there's anything happening there at this point. Uh, so this weekend, uh, Doug Nestor did follow through on his plans to visit Penn State, and obviously that's not good news by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but is it, you know, where does it sit with Ohio State? Do they, uh, do they think they got a fighting chance here, or you know, is it slipping away? Where, where would you assess this right now after his yeah. Penn State visit? Yeah. Um, so he did. He has not committed to Penn State. So that's you know that's a bonus. <laughs> um, no flip. Uh, as of now, um, no indication that it's, you know, definitely coming or anything like that. Um, but it, it's, it's odd. Um, 
you know, Ohio State's been pretty optimistic there for a long time, just talking to people about, about the situation ever since he started kind of quietly visiting other programs back in like October, I think was like the first one. Um, and, uh, but there's some real confusion as to why they've had to work this hard. I think, I mean, it, two, they, they got two official visits. Can you imagine if they didn't get the second official visit? I mean, what, what a situation they'd be in right now. I mean, they really needed to have that. Um, and, and they were able to get it because of the coaching change, but, I think that makes it even more confusing. Like he was clearly it interested does. enough to give them the two the two visits, <laughs> and it's like and it it does. In going into each of visit, the one in December and then the one last week, it was the whole the whole goal of both of those was to get him to shut this down, and they neither time were they able to do it. Um, and so here here we sit, and again he hasn't he hasn't flipped. Um. Ohio State saw him on Friday before he left for his visit. On his, uh, he had a basketball game on Friday. Um, I was told multiple assistants, which I mean, I know um, Greg Sejuara was one. Uh, I don't know for a fact who the other assistant was. I was told multiple assistants were at the basketball game. Um, Day was initially going to do it Thursday. That got bumped. Then it was a possibility that he was going to go Friday do the basketball game and then try and, you know, talk to Doug after that was decided against. So here we are now where he still has his in home with Doug. And that's going to come obviously at some point here between now. And I, I, I think Sunday night is the last night they can do this um, a week from today. I think it's the last night they can do this uh, until it goes uh, uh, dead or quiet or whatever. They're the couple days before signing day. Um, I have to check the recruiting calendar on that, but it's going to be this week at some point. And um, James Franklin's already used his. Uh, I was told Penn State's going to have assistants. Uh, Juwan Sider, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be one. Or, I'm sure there's going to be a few of them. Uh, I believe Thursday night is the goal right now on Penn State's end. Um which I don't know if that'll be the final word with him or not. Uh, I don't, I don't know how that the, the way, the way this works is you can do like one a week for, if you're an assistant, but I have to actually check on when the week starts, if it starts Sunday or Monday, because if it starts on Monday, then I think they're, I think Thursday would be, it would be the final word for them. Uh, but if the week starts Sunday, I don't, in, in terms of the recruiting calendar, you, they may be able to try and get in there Sunday as well. I don't, because I know uh, Ohio State's done a few times this this month where they've been a place, you know, Thursday, Friday, then they go in on Monday. But um, that's obviously because of school days and things like that. So I got to double check that to make sure I don't misspeak on that in terms of when the last day um, in, or in terms of if they can do multiple, if they could go in Thursday and then it, and then if Sunday's con- you know, considered a new week or, or what. But. Um, obviously, Ohio State and Ryan Day are going to have to get in there by Sunday night because then it goes uh, goes dark on us until uh, until Wednesday. Um, it, it would be well, now. It would. Uh, you might have touched on this. You said Ryan Day was in there, so it wouldn't be Ryan Day going in the second time, right? Because he would have used up his in home. So it'd be in Ohio. Ohio State assistants would be able to go back, but Ryan Day would not. Is that right? Would um, I no the Thursday visits Penn State. Okay. Okay. All right. No, so, I, I, yeah. So that, that got me on my tangent there. I know I, that was probably very hard to follow. So okay. <laughs> Thursday is, I don't, Ohio state doesn't have anything set yet to my knowledge. Okay. For this coming week. Okay. But Ryan day will be in there at some point. Okay. So Ryan day um, did not he make, has his he, he did not, not he did not make it in before the Penn state visit this weekend then. No. Oh, okay. No, it, it got, it got like bumped two different times. It was, it was kind of crazy trying to, figure that out on Thursday and Friday when it kept getting bumped. Um, so no, it has not happened yet. Well, that, that's um, my source of, that was my source of confusion right there. That's why for people wondering like, well, Kyle's really confused right now. That's why I thought Ryan day was in there before the visit. Uh, but if no, he was not, that no, makes sense. It got, it got bumped. Um, so, so he still has his, and then I, and then Penn state's Franklin has used his for Penn state. So okay. Franklin cannot, cannot visit with Doug the rest of the way. Um, but Penn State assistants were supposed to go Thursday, 
And I was gonna, I was just gonna say that could be their final word with him, but I don't know if they're allowed to go back on Sunday or not. If Sunday constitutes a new week, or if it's Monday, I feel like it's Monday, so I feel like Thursday could be it. But I need to, I guess I need to brush up on that with with what constitutes a new week, because you're only allowed the assistants are only allowed to visit kids once a week, but it's it's not like seven days apart. You can do like a Friday Monday type of thing and it counts. I think it's a calendar week, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Somebody told me once it was a calendar week, but that may have changed a thousand times over with the NCAA right. rules. I, so they're changing. They, I've I've spent half you know this cycle trying to get up on the rules because they've changed so much stuff recently. The, a lot of minor, yeah, a lot of minor things have really changed the last couple of years. It's it's been crazy. Um, so, okay, I want to uh, turn the tables in. We, we, you mentioned a couple times uh, about this strong 2020 class, and we've, we've danced around it a few times with a couple of different kids, and you, you had a big, uh, a big report co- going up on Buckeye Grove on Sunday about a, a, you know, a huge running back that is planning to visit Ohio State, Kendall Milton from Clovis, California, one of the top backs in the country. So tell me about this kid and uh, you know, the kind of vibe you got from this report uh, that you put up on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Um... So, you know, they have been – Ohio State's kind of been right there the whole way. Um, you know, and a lot of people – again, this, this, is, this is where things get a little, you know, tricky. A lot of people penciled him in for USC very early. But we've seen what's going on at USC now, and that may not be the end of things for USC in terms of the, the drama because – you got to figure that some seats are warm this fall that they've got to win. You know, they've got to, they've got to produce this fall on the field or so there can be some more coaching changes there. And, and so there's some uncertainty there with the school that's been perceived uh, to be the favorite. And so Ohio state's always been considered a school. that's certainly in his top, you know, three or four schools, but the whole thing's been, well, he's got to visit. And, you know, is he going to do an unofficial because, you know, he, while, while this may work out with, Vima High here at some point, um, you know, the, the general percentages just plummet if you don't get an unofficial visit. It's, it's very hard to land a kid with just an official visit. And um, so, you know, when's he going to get out here? You know, that's kind of been the thing. It's been really been a thing for almost a year now. And uh, the answer is that they've got it. They're booked for, for uh, April 4th or through the 7th. And it's going to be an unofficial visit, so they can bring him back later. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, I think it's worth, you know, keeping a, keeping an eye on because we don't know what USC is going to go through here these next 10, 12 months. And once you take USC out of the equation, uh, a lot of his other schools are, are, you know, not exactly three or four hour drives. I mean, you know, Oklahoma, Alabama, you know, those are, you know, essentially cross country flights as well for the most part. I mean. I don't think, you know, but Anaheim or whatever, wherever he might, or, uh, no, it would be when he's fly out of San Fran from up there or yeah. wherever he would fly out, uh, fly out of, um, you know, to get to Norman, Oklahoma is not going to be, you know, much, much different of a, of a trip than, you know, flying to Columbus. So, um, I, I think it's interesting. I, I think they've got a chance, a, a real opportunity here. Um, you, you can't predict how the kid's going to take a bit, you know, how he's going to process a visit uh three months in advance but um you know kid and, and, and dad are coming out and i don't i mean it could be some other family i'm not sure if i just know that those two are um and and they're gonna have multiple days to really uh convince him that, that you know he needs to take a very serious look i want to uh get a little like as signing day passes mark i want to get into a little more 2020 more extensively but a uh, couple kids I want to ask you here before – ask you about before we, we wrap it up. Um, so the D.C. trio, one of the kids did commit to Clemson, the 2020 kid, Trey Williams, defensive tackle. Uh, he did commit to Clemson. But uh, now you seem to be still really, really optimistic about Ohio State's chances for the other two, uh, Rakeem Jarrett and Mikhail Sherman. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean I, I feel really good about Jarrett. I feel pretty good about Sherman. Um I thought the Meyer thing was going to be tough um, with Mikhail, and and uh, it, it definitely was. I think they've stabilized things a little bit there. Um, I still think they've got a great shot. Am I? You know, do I huh, do I love their chances like I did? You know, 
six weeks ago, not quite as much, but I still think they have a great shot. I mean, it's not one of those things where I think they're out of it or that they, you know, there's five schools ahead of them or something like that. I just think they, that's the one kid I think they need to get back on campus because um, just he lost a lot of his uh, people <laughs> um, at Ohio State. Um, you know, you, you, he was talking to Urban Meyer the most. And then, you know, Shiano was involved and Billy Davis was involved and Larry Johnson has been involved, too, which helps. But um, I just think I just think that's a kid they need to get back on campus. But they've uh, they are they went right by the school. Ryan Day was by the school. Larry Johnson's been by the school. I mean, they've they've really um, they've really made an effort with, with Jarrett. I, I just think him and Hardliner are, are very much on the same wavelength right now. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we'll see what happens with Clemson. But. That kid's playing the game, I think. I mean, he's 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 really oh, he playing the game. Me. You know, people that people that read into his tweets have to really uh, stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> They'll drive themselves insane. He 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 plays it up on Twitter. He knows he knows how to play the game. Yeah, he he plays it as well as any kid I've seen in a while. He uh he loves that drama. Now with Sherman, that was uh you know before when Ohio State was taking a commanding lead, it seemed to be an Ohio State Bama battle. Is it still those two schools right now, or is there anybody else involved uh, with him? Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of schools involved. Um, you know, Georgia. I, I know uh, Clemson's been recruiting him. There's a lot. I mean, he's one of those. He's a pick your school kid. I mean, he could call probably any program in America right now and commit, and they would take it. Um, I still think Ohio State and Bama are a great bet against the field. Um, so that's that's kind of you know I don't think that has really changed. I just I I think he was I think Ohio State was closing in on a spring commitment from him. To be honest with you, I I, I think they were closing in on getting him on campus this spring at some point and maybe closing the deal. Um, can that happen now with with the coaching change? I don't know. I just don't know if that's going to be in the cards until, you know, Ryan Day has some games under his belt this fall. I, I think I think it became maybe a longer term thing. But, you know, if if you're looking at that from the other side, you could always tell me, well, Mark, you know, if he commits to Ohio State tomorrow, it's not like Alabama and Clemson and, and those Georgia are gonna stop recruiting him. And that's that's true. I mean, so I guess does that really matter? You know, I guess that I guess up to the person each person can kind of take that as they want. I mean, you can, you know, I, I kind of should take my own advice on that, I guess. And, and it's, you know, I always say on the board, what does it matter if it commits tomorrow or six months? Like, you know, Alabama and LSU are going to stop recruiting to Kyle Sherman because he committed to Ohio State, and that's going to happen. And we've had that conversation so many times where sometimes you you get a commitment and you become the leader, and everybody tears you down for several months, and you wind up maybe. Uh, some doubt creeping into the prospect's mind, and he winds up decommitting. You know, maybe this is a blessing in disguise. He doesn't commit that early, and Ohio State maybe just can low key it a little more for a while. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it really. Is. I mean, everyone thinks that you know. I, I don't know. People are getting smarter about this. I think I don't. Maybe you shouldn't say everyone, but I, th- I think a lot of people still think that this stuff ends when the kids commit. It just doesn't. I mean, if, if anything, it ups the sense of urgency of the other schools, and it just it's you know it's like sharks. <laughs> blood in the water for sharks. I mean, they just, you know, so, you know, you, you, it's not, I wouldn't say it's highly coordinated between the other schools, but now the other schools know who to go after. And when you've got four or five other, you know, prominent head coaches or schools or whatever, uh, recruiting against the school you're committed to, um, you know, that can wear on kids and it does a lot. Um, and you know, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it may be, it may be better if this one, you know, goes longer. I just, you know, I, to me, they were closing in on a spring commitment with Urban Meyer. And I just, I just don't know. Um, I think he's very impressed with Ryan Day. I have, I have reached out to him a few times, obviously. And, we, we, you know, he, I feel like he's impressed with Ryan Day, but it's like, okay, I think a lot of kids are impressed. I think a lot of kids also are going to want to see some results this fall. Well, Mark, I appreciate the update. We'll definitely uh, keep in touch. Uh, next week uh, will be signing day. We'll find out what happens with Ma- Bamahi and, and Nestor and, and Jones, and we'll uh, we'll get an update from, from you from then. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to catch Mark Gibbler, you can always catch him on BuckeyeGrove.com and on Twitter at MarkGibblerBG. Mark, I appreciate the update, buddy. Yep, thanks.
That'll wrap it up for the Unscripted Ohio podcast for today. Thanks again for Mark Gibbler joining us. And, of course, coming up on Wednesday, we have the Scarlet and Drake podcast here on the Unscripted Ohio Network. That is Corey Thompson and Johnny Lunsford coming at you with more Buckeye news and opinions and insights. I promise if you have not listened to Corey and Johnny already, please do so. Of course, Corey and Johnny were with me on the Friday podcast here on Unscripted Ohio. So if you liked what you heard from those two, give their podcast a listen. They're really funny. They're insightful. Uh, They have their moments. They're a lot of fun. Uh, I promise you, you will enjoy the Scarlet and Great podcast. As for us, the Unscripted Ohio podcast, we will be back at you again. Normal, bat time, bat channel here on BuckeyeGrove.com on Friday. That is Unscripted Ohio every Monday and every Friday. Of course, you can also listen on the medium of your choice on the archives, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify. And you can catch me on Twitter at KYLAM8. You can also follow us on Twitter on the official Twitter we have just started this week at Unscripted Ohio 1. So be sure to follow the Unscripted Ohio Twitter account. Uh, We will keep you apprised of all future episodes and news and goings on here in the Unscripted Ohio business. Thanks for giving us a listen, everybody. We'll be back at you on Friday. Make sure you listen to Scarlet and Great on Wednesday. Have a great week. Go Bucks. You can get new episodes of Unscripted Ohio on Mondays and Fridays exclusively at BuckeyeGrove.com or anytime on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things Ohio State.